Uh, hello, good evening and welcome. Here we go again. It's Thursday, 30 for January 2020. Uh, Mark Willits here with you tonight with one of my favourite guests. The hour always flies quick. It is Philip Day, Credence Health. Good evening, Philip. Great to be here. Oh, bless you, mate. 2020. Oh, don't. Never thought I'd make it. <laughs> And how old are you this year? You just told 60. me. 60. <laughs> it's not the years, it's the mileage. No, it is. Yeah, absolutely is. So I'm 50, he's 60. What are you? Who cares? Just bring your questions in tonight. I was about to give the old number out there, but um, because we've had a couple of weeks off and the new numbers come in, so that will miraculously appear on our screens very, very soon. But don't go on the old one because it's not there anymore. But live at revelationtv.com, 07860-058799. You know the score with Philip. Basically, he'll answer pretty much anything. Health. Illness, sickness, weather, conspiracy theories, you name it. Corona, coronavirus. Coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he'll have a go at absolutely anything. But tonight, Philip, there is a little thing that you're doing, a little project. Oh, yes. Tell us about this project, this new film that you're heavily involved in. Yeah. About... Um... Well, um, I'm delighted to say that the film that we've been writing, which is um, dealing with the human spirit, you know, there's a lot of this commemoration of yeah. Auschwitz and various, you know, D-Day and that sort of thing. Um, uh, last year I began writing a movie because all around the village where I live we've got these um, ponds that were made by these V1 doodle bugs that crashed in 1944 and, and a crew came in the other day and they were digging out a V2 rocket that got launched out of Holland and I thought this is amazing and looked into it anyway long story short we wrote a film and it just got optioned in Hollywood uh, so, oh, so uh, wow. I might be going over there to Santa Monica and having a bit of a sunbathe. But no, it's, it's, wow. a, it's, it's a fantastic experience. I've spoken to absolutely everybody, you know, Spitfire pilots and Typhoon pilots and really to, to find. But it's a great story about the ordinary people being faced with extraordinary and very frightening circumstances. Bet, yeah. um, and it happened right where I live in the village, you know, and all round Kent and London, of course, got, got plastered as yes, well. Yes, totally, so, yeah. Cry Havoc, isn't it? It's called, it's called Cry Havoc and yeah. uh, Let's Slip the Dogs of War. Wow. But it's, um, no, it's, it's a real story uh, yeah. and um, just, just great. So we'll see what happens with it. Good luck. Well, I don't like saying the words good luck, not in the kingdom, but yeah, may yeah. God bless you, as Yemi would say. Yeah, yeah, well, if it's his will, it'll be out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it absolutely will. Oh, Philip, it's all happening in the world, isn't it? We are 25 hours, 50-odd minutes away from Brexit. Yes, we are. And yeah. uh, um, the end of a long, long struggle. Uh, yeah. You know, depending on, I mean, viewers gonna, looking in on this will have different uh, of opinions of it. Um, my particular opinion, uh, as I was explaining to somebody over the phone this morning, is why would you ever want to be ruled by somebody, by people you can't sack? Yes. And that's the bottom line, really. And um, I'm, I'm a history buff, I just love history. And after World War II, Europe had every opportunity to set up a democratic, federalised state, if you like, you know, across Europe to prevent another disaster, another war happening. Yeah. Um, but it didn't quite turn out that way, unfortunately. So um, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's in the Lord's hands, and yeah. I think the Lord's got his hand on our kingdom. And, I, I uh, think he does. And also in Europe as well. I mean, I take my holidays out. I love Europe. I really do. But there needs to be some accountability, and there hasn't been that. I yeah. brought a book out called Ten Minutes to Midnight, and it explained the problems about it. And I think a lot of the public are waking up to what's been going on. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, you know what, Philip? I'll be off to see my accountant in about six months. And do you know what? I think the last shout, Europe hadn't had its accounts audited for over 20 years. Yeah, so signed I think it was off. 22 years. Yeah. I mean, if you ran a business like that, you'd be in prison. Yeah. Long, long time in prison, in yeah. fact. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, why can't they just be straight with it? That was the thing that always galled me, um, you know, way back when I looked at the book. I mean, I had no, no particular axe to grind, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's big stuff. And the other big stuff in the news is the dreaded coronavirus. Yes. Philip, what's happening with oh, that? I've been absolutely... What's your understanding? Absolutely buried in emails uh, on it, and I understand people's concern. I think we start with this one by thinking back to SARS, and bird flu and swine flu and the media tends to make a huge you know uh, scare story out of the whole thing mm. and I'm not playing it down it's just when you look at the flu in general uh, you're looking at an immune system problem I mean the first thing you've got to explain is if flu comes to your town or, or to your village or even into your family some people get it and some don't You've got, to be explain, you've got to be able to explain why some people get the flu yeah. and some don't. I mean, I haven't had the flu in living memory, uh, but people in my family, 
not in my house, but, uh, you know, um, immediate family uh, do suffer from it yeah. um, when it comes calling. So part of it is boosting the immune system, making sure that everything is uh, uh, as it should be. And we've dealt with these subjects with vitamin D and yeah, um, high-dose yeah. vitamin C and all of that. Um, a good website to go to if you want to look into this is greenmedinfo.com. Uh, green as in the color, medinfo.com. And, uh, and one of my favorite sites, actually, is Dr. Andrew Saul. He's at doctoryourself.com, and he does a lot on uh, viral illness and uh, heavy doses of vitamin C and so on. Yeah. And, and the, a lot of viewers will know the story of Alan Smith, who was a New Zealand farmer who became so sick with swine flu back at the he, He'd gone to holiday in Bali. Um, and he had what's called whiteout pneumonia. In fact, the pneumonia was so, um, was, was so entrenched that they couldn't even see his lungs on an x-ray. Wow. And, um, but he got out of that. He got out of it. I mean, they were going to turn... He was put on life support, an ECMO life support system, and they were going to turn the machine off. Um, and he had three uh, strapping sons, farmer sons. Yeah. And they said, no, you're not turning Dad off until you're giving him high-dose intravenous vitamin C. Yes. And a big fight ensued. The hospital wouldn't do it, and, and it was going to go to the Supreme Court in New Zealand, and then finally they did it, and it pulled him out. Wow. Um, I went to your, uh, your conference a couple of months ago with Vicky and, and some friends, and I remember one of the uh, clips you showed was a, a, a doctor, a professor, who just sat there and said, what are you worried about? And he took 16 horse tablets of 1,000 milligram vitamin C, yeah. threw them all down his neck, water, yeah. fine. Yeah. And like you showed, how many people have died of vitamin C overdoses compared to this, that, and the other? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Well, it's actually in it's, it's about... What it's really about is giving the body the resources it needs to do the job. And that's all nutrition is. It's yeah. information. We are information systems. So what you're eating is, is very important in, uh, from the standpoint of giving the body the resources it needs to be able to yeah. get on top. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you, Philip. Right, well, the hour always flows uh, and flies, so let's storm straight on. Hi, Mark and Philip. Looking forward to tonight's programme. A question. I've always believed that a good diet should give you all the vitamins and minerals you need, but most of my friends are taking vitamin tablets and supplements. Am I missing out? Should I be taking these? My husband and I are both retired and in good health. Thanks for your advice. Blessings. Clarissa. Yeah, it's a great, uh, great a question, question, Clarissa. And I think the best way of answering that is a lot of commercially grown food is... Um, farmed out, basically. The, the uh, soils are farmed out. There's very poor mineral content. In fact, it became a matter of concern for the US Senate. I believe it was in 1933. Um, they said, well, a carrot isn't a carrot anymore because it doesn't have the nutrients required um, to do what a carrot should do for you. And that was in 1933. So we have a situation where there's a lot of deplete, mineral depletion in the soils. That is being addressed in certain areas. The other thing also is that if we lead very high, hectic lives, and if we are stressed out, we are drawing down large amounts of, of say, vitamin C, would be an example. Um, if you're stressed out, that depletes vitamin C because the body is producing epinephrine or adrenaline, and, and vitamin C is sacrificed uh, in the manufacture of those um, stress hormones. Uh, if you're drinking coffee, that's giving you that wired feeling, which again is generating epinephrine, so you're stripping vitamin C down. If you smoke cigarettes still, um, you might as well attach a vacuum cleaner to your nostrils and just suck all the vitamin C right out of the body. Uh, so there you are in London on a Monday morning, stressed out, having a cup of coffee and a cigarette. Wow. So it just compounds wow. the problem. So to answer your question, it's okay to take extra nutrients because nutrients aren't like drugs. There's no real problem with taking extra nutrients. Uh, why would you not? And especially in the winter time, it's, it makes sense to do that. I don't think you have to spend 500 pounds a month on them, um, but there are key areas that I think um, would need to be covered. Uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, magnesium would be a, a useful thing. Good stuff. Brilliant. Okay, Mark has got a good one. I've never, never heard of the first one. Uh, hi, what do you think of bioresonance therapy? Also, what is your opinion on kinesi kinesiology? Okay, two good questions. Yeah. Um, the... Here's, here's the problem we've got with reporting or investigating these types of new sciences that are coming out. First of all, we've got to appreciate that the human body, we are electrical creatures. And if you really want to boggle your mind, go um, buy a pint of beer for a quantum physicist and get him talking to you about the nature of reality. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. We are projections of energy, if you like. Um, so 
When we look at bioresonance and when we're looking at kinesiology and various other sciences, these are poo-pooed, obviously, in traditional med medical or science circles um, because nobody's really done the studies because there's no payoff at the end of it. That's the problem you get. It's a commercial science. Med medical science is very commercial these days. Um, sickness, I have to say, it is the biggest business on Earth. It is, yeah. Right, so yeah. there are powerful dynamos, um, you know, involved in it. So, yes, we're electrical creatures. Do I believe all of what's reported with kinesiology and bioresonance? No, I don't. Is there something to it? Yes, there is. And um, you can get into Rife's work. You can get into, you know, there's a ton of stuff that I've written on uh, before. The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton will be familiar to some of you who've gone into Dr. Bruce Lipton's work. Um, this has a very interesting dovetailing effect with the Bible. It, it, it talks about your thought life. Um, are you thinking positively? Because if you're thinking negatively or if you're stressed out, this, the, this was the subject of 16 meetings I did last autumn. That was the one that you came to. One of the ones we had, yeah. Yeah, it's about your thought life. Um, are you in control of that? Are there areas that you've lost control over? Are you stressed out? So I had um, half a dozen calls this morning from people with all the same problem, depression and anxiety. They're depressed, they're anxious, they're waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, energy is low, and they don't know the way out of it. Yeah. So. Well, we are, it feels like everyone's just falling like dominoes now, Philip, with, with stress and anxiety. It feels like the, the talking therapies can't keep up with people's issues, counselling galore. And I was thinking this, don't, whatever you do, don't take offence at this, but I was thinking of like 70, 80 years ago in the, in the First and Second World Wars, we had 18 and 19 year old young men and women going off to war, getting their heads blown off, seeing absolutely horrific stuff. And it seems like 80 years later, you know, you, it, if you buy a tea bag which offends you by the name, you need 18 years of counselling. It just, it, mm. why, why are we so now apparently so weak? Mm. Why, are we, why are we needing counselling for every Tom, Dick and Ali that comes against us? A lot of it is, on? I think a lot of it, we looked into this as well, and I think one of the chief issues is that we've medicalised a whole bunch of things that other people would have just, you know, rolled up their sleeves and got on with it. You know, in the old days, if a V1 came down in your back garden and then you met up with Vera down the road a bit later, she'd say, well, how, how are you getting on? And you could say, I'm having one of those days. Yeah. You know, that's what it was, you know. It was. But these days, uh, it seems the slightest... I mean, we've had this whole thing with the newsreader in ITN, Alistair Stewart. Yeah, today. Now, yeah. he started reading the news when I was 16. Wow. And wow. all of a sudden, because of a slip, whether or not you think it was a bad or, you know, nothing, it makes no difference. But he was summarily fired from his position. Um, and even the person he allegedly offended is saying, well, I didn't want it to go that far, you know, and you get all this going on. It seems like we have the professionally offended out there. And the other problem, of course, with anxiety is that we, is TMI, too much information. We're getting buried in it. Yeah. And people are just cracking up, you know. Yeah. Uh, and now we've got the whole 5G thing coming online. Yes. We can maybe talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. great stuff. Best thing I ever did was coming off Twitter. What a complete waste of time. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Here we go. Hi, Mark and Philip. We're always hearing the health people say that the human body is becoming so used to antibiotics uh, that, and that they're often not working. Are there any natural substitutes for antibiotics? Let me give an example. Um, we know of situations where you get an infection, the doctor gives you an antibiotic, the infection goes away, you stop taking the antibiotic and the infection comes back. So what's that telling you? It's telling you that the immune system isn't strong enough to take over once the antibiotics stop, right? So again, this comes back to immune function. And antibiotics should be just a, a short, sharp, five days, ten days max. But that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing people being put on antibiotics for months upon, you know, month upon month upon month. That's having a, 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 a damaging effect to gut flora and the immune function in general. Um, that's widely known. Nobody's really disputing that. The key here is what can we do on the natural side? And number one is it comes back to the same old thing. If you want a proper immune system, you've got to be vitamin D optimized. You've got to manage your stress. You've got to be actually eating real food for a change, hydrating. Let's get that thing done first. You would revolutionize the NHS if you brought those things in. And I'll give you an example. For as long as I've been coming on 
Revelation TV, we've been talking about diabetes, type 2, and how it can be reversed very quickly with diet and lifestyle changes, you know, and sometimes in as little as 10 to 21 days, depending on the severity. You know, for 30 years I've written about this, I've talked about it, um, done books on it. Now, all of a sudden, just in the last six months, what are we hearing on the news? We're hearing, oh, change your diet to reverse. Yeah, exactly. How much did America spend treating type 2 diabetes last year with drugs? $249 billion. Right? Billion, yeah. Billion. Yeah. Do you know how much a billion is? It's a thousand million. I wouldn't worry because Westminster has no clue either. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. this is the problem we've got, folks. So, you know, the answers are so very before us, but. Nutrition is not allowed a foot in the door because the moment you allow the power of the molecules to get in over man's brilliance, it's almost a form, I hate to say this, but, and I love science, and, and, and science is very different from scientism, which is the religion of science. Scientism is, if you like, the deification of man's achievement and that's a dangerous thing. I mean, yeah. we've seen that with evolution. We've seen it in a whole range of um, this whole genetic modification thing that's been going on. You know, we're diddling around with the building blocks of God's creation with scant regard for the butterfly effect that rolls out as a result of that. We haven't got a clue what we're doing. So we're playing God. And of course, this is just utter hubris and it, it's going to end badly. And we're seeing. Um, Again, with the 5G thing that's coming in, I'm concerned about that because I'm not convinced by uh, any of the studies that are purported to show it to be safe. I think actually at this point we don't really know. But um, it's a concern and it's been, and those concerns have been swamped out by the whole Huawei yeah. thing, yeah. Right? Which, yeah. which is either a clever deflection tactic. Yeah. Perfect, uh, timing, perfect timing, isn't it? Perfect you know, timing. Perfect timing. The moment we all go, hang on, is this thing really safe? It's like, no, we don't want the Chinese getting involved, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? As an old sceptic, former cab driver of 25 years, I don't believe anything anyone tells me pretty much. I would love it? to have got in your cab. I would. <laughs> Take me from Marble Arch down to Charing Cross and tell me what's wrong with the world. <laughs> Okie dokie, skip, here we go. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely shocking. Absolutely. Uh, God bless you, Jeff. Hi, Mark. Always great to see you, Philip, and I highly recommend his books. Please could you ask him if he feels that taking blood pressure tablets such as amlodipine can do more harm than good. Many thanks. God bless, Jeff. Jeff, um, what I would recommend that you do um, is to Google up the name of the drug, put the words side effects after it, and what you get coming up on a Google search like that will be your common side effects, your not-so-common side effects, and your rare side effects. Um, it's important to know what um, untoward effects can happen with taking medication. And if you're taking more than one or two medications at the same time, now you have a problem because we've got to try to figure out, well, there are no studies. If you're on, I mean, a lady was speaking to me the other day, she was on 10 different medications. Now, there are no studies that show how 10, those 10 medications interact with each other mm. on her blood type. That's a concern. So effectively, she's an open-ended chemistry experiment. And so she's got every right to go back to those doctors and say, you know, what am I, what could happen? Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been feeling out of sorts and she thinks that she was having side effects from that. When, uh, as far as blood pressure goes, um, somebody else called me the other day and said, every time I go to the doctor, my blood pressure goes up. Oh, yes. It's like, you know, well, every time I open up a bank statement, my blood pressure goes up <laughs> as well. That's not a medical problem, that's a money problem, you know. So, uh, there are different reasons why. I mean, lack of hydration can raise um, blood pressure. Wow, I didn't know that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stress yeah. can raise blood pressure. There's a range of things that can... Um, insulin, if you're um, spiking, if you're on high sugar diets, that can spike um, insulin and create high blood sugar problems. If your waist um, measurement is more than 40 inches on the fellas, um, then what that does is that creates uh, pressure, internal yeah. pressure that can do that as well. Yeah. So, yeah, these are lots all, of stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Well, you've got us all at it in the, in the Willits house. So we're all on vitamin Ds and vitamin Cs, and we're juicing, we're celery juicing. We're, I, I was down in Asda's last night about half past nine, ten o'clock. Vic, Vicky had me sent me in there getting all the kale and the and all the stuff, and I walked out of there looking like a right health, uh, health freak. Health nut. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're giving it a real good go, you know. Yeah. Andy from Coventry loves what you're saying. Evening, Mark and Philip. Uh, what pills is Philip taking? Magical youth pills, 60, really. I've been taking vitamin D and C and have, for the first time in many a year, avoided a cold. And I'm feeling much better than I have done for a good few years. I hope that Brexit will make us healthier. Don't know how, but I hope it will. Thanks for your advice on the wonder of vitamin D. It does work.
Andy. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Here's a nice little simple one, I hope. Teresa. Hi, Philip. What, would you, what do you suggest to get movement back for a frozen shoulder? When was the last time you was asked that? Oh, frozen shoulder. Hmm. I had one of those once. Yeah. Um, frozen shoulder, well, again, we would look at whether there's, it's been as a result of injury or if it just kind of froze on you uh, or you've got a restriction in movement. Um, interestingly, chiropractors have got a, um, a method for this. Uh, I would also be looking at, uh, again, the, the same old thing, uh, vitamin D. Joints require a lot of water. Um, I often get uh, emails coming through for, for lower back pain. That can be a dehydration problem. Yeah. The fifth lumbar disc in your spine contains a core of water upon which is supported 75% of your upper body weight. Wow. Most people don't know that. Uh, you so just made that up. I'm sure you just made that up, and you finished it. It rolled off the tongue. <laughs> uh, no, it's a fact. Um, wow. And we did a water project, which, which was the Essential Guide to Water and Salt book that we did. Um, and what was interesting, we did that with one of the top um, water scientists, uh, an Iranian scientist. Very, I remember you said yeah. about this guy, yeah. Yeah, he was absolutely fascinating. Um, so, yeah, with frozen shoulder, we would look at uh, vitamin D. We would look at generally, um, did this, I mean, these things don't generally happen in a vacuum. There's normally a lead up to what, you know, what's happened there. Um, so, yeah, I would check the vitamin D. I would make sure that um, you're hydrated properly for starters. Thanks, Philip. Good stuff. Oh, Amanda from Belfast. A good little question. Uh, why is it called the coronavirus? Doesn't corona mean crown? Yeah, it's something to do. I think it's something to do with the shape of it. I haven't really okay, looked into right, it. The shape of the yeah, but they, they've they've worked out that it's very similar to a bat virus of some kind. Um, don't know what to make of that. Uh, and also, it's very close to the uh, the SARS virus that came out a few years ago. But again, it's the flu. And uh, are we react? Are we overreacting to it? I'll let you judge about that. But on average, each year in Britain, we lose six hundred to 13,000 in a bad year uh, to complications of flu. A lot of them will be elderly. Um, elderly people ha generally have weaker immune systems than us young whippersnappers. Uh, so the problem you've got, of course, is uh, what have we got? We're up to about 167 deaths at this point with coronavirus. So at this point, it's not ringing alarm bells with me. I'm seeing a lot of people running around with masks on. What I'd sooner see is uh, people being told to hydrate and, you know, take the straightforward um, prophylactics, which, again, would be vitamin C, high doses of that. Um, this worked for me. I remember when I, was, when I was at school, I was nothing but sick. Yeah. And I remember going, because I went to boarding school all the way down in Thanet. Have you ever been to Thanet? No. Not quite the end of the world, but you can see the end of the world from there. And I went to a, I went to a school down there, boarding school, and I remember just hearing the North Fallen foghorn going off, which was the most eerie sound you can imagine in the middle of winter, you know. Yeah. And I was just cold after cold after cold. And it wasn't until year and flu, awful. And that, that just dogged me right the way through my school years. It wasn't until years later that I came across this whole thing of boosting um, D and C. Yeah. I haven't had any problems since. What, in literally that many years? Yeah. Now, just the economics of this make it interesting. I mean, what would happen if you didn't, if companies didn't have people out, yeah. key, key men and women, out of the operation for two, three, four weeks, mm. you know, with the flu or what have yeah. you? So this information is just not being made available. It's not. Yeah. Um, good websites, again, to go to would be those two I mentioned earlier, doctoryourself.com. Dr. Andrew Saul, um, interesting guy. He's uh, editor of the Journal of Orthomolecular Medicine. He's got a, I don't know, three, four dozen scientists and doctors around the world um, that, again, are doing work on this. Um, orthomolecular.org is the, the website. Orthomolecular.org is the science site to look into some of this thing. And doctoryourself.com is a great site for, it's kind of a, a folksy homesteading site, if you like, to, uh, for looking at um, uh, issues with vitamin C and D and that sort of thing as well. Good stuff. It all comes back to that, doesn't it? It all seems... We to are, we are you, absolutely dependent. If not strong, it is... We're absolutely dependent on nutrition. Yeah, absolutely, question. yeah. Shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. No, absolutely. Hi, guys. My wife suffers really bad with palpitations, not connected to any anxiety, as she has them all the time. She finds them very debilitating. She's been put on various beta blockers, but none of them seem to work. The yeah. palpitation sometimes causes her blood pressure to rapidly drop, which causes her to pass out. Philip, is there anything you could recommend to her? Yeah, I would test her for vitamin D. I would also um, 
get her uh, under advisement from a, a, a medical doctor on magnesium. Magnesium, yeah. Yeah, mag. On, on the subject of magnesium, magnesium catalyzes hundreds of enzyme reactions in the body. And the thing with mag is that you can't really measure it with a blood test because most of the mag, they estimate about 98% of the magnesium in your body is inside the cells where you can't measure it. Um, so a lot of people are very low on magnesium. There's been quite a few newspaper articles recently that talk about, oh, if you're worn out, if you're uh, tired, or if you've got spasms or cramps or anything like that, take some magnesium. And the RDL magnesium in most areas is about 400 milligrams, which is kind of on the low side for therapeutic work. I take about a gram a day. Uh, so if you get mag citrate, which is 20% uh, elemental mag, and take a heap teaspoon of that, yeah. Mark, that's five grams a heap teaspoon generally. Is it okay? Uh, for most things apart from plutonium. And a uh, heap teaspoon, and 20% of that is about a gram. So okay, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a good slug for, a, for a, an adult. That's yeah. good. And yeah. scale down according to... Uh, Age. Kids and pets. Yeah, kids and pets. Same thing, really. Isn't it? <laughs> Get me cat on it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and you'll know when you take too. I mean, mag citrate is very benign. Um, so you, you, if you take too much of it, it'll just run out the back end of you. But that's yeah. not really happening at this point. But mag is very important for pr uh, things like blood pressure and um, uh, muscular function, a ton of other stuff as well. Yeah. It, it also um, helps with the absorption of vitamin D. Oh, it does. So it obviously get it come in quicker and better, yeah. Yeah, it bring, brings that in. Yep. Um, Dr. Carolyn Dean has done a great book on magnesium. I think I might put it out on our e-blast on uh, this coming Friday. It's, we've had some uh, people asking for it, so, yeah. Okay, good stuff. Right, Marcus says, Hi, is there a catch-all tablet to take that will give us many of the vitamins we need? Uh, yeah, it's called food. Food, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of... The sort of one a day, you know, the, the, yeah. the one a day things. Yes. Because frankly, the, um, the vitamins and minerals, some of the trace minerals are, are you know, it's about therapeutic, um, it's about, you've got to take therapeutic doses of nutrients for them to do what you want them to do. So, you know, you'll, you'll hear people say things like, well, I've heard that vitamin D is really good. And they run down a local store and they get 200 IUs of vitamin D, which is not enough to jumpstart a cricket. That's right, yeah. So you, the, the whole thing is about taking them in their therapeutic ranges. So nutrients of therapeutic ranges, which, are obvi which in many cases are an order of magnitude more than the RDA. Mm. Vitamin C, I mean, you're not really in the game with vitamin C under 5 grams a day for an adult. No. That's 5,000 milligrams. 5, milligrams. What's yeah. the RDA? 60. So It's just not even on the chart. No, no, I mean, it? you, it's the same with, um, uh, you know, D, go to the local store, 200 international units. Um, Everyone's so frightened. They're, they're kind of pussyfooting around nutrients because the, they're putting it out there that anything that's therapeutically valuable must be dangerous because drugs are. And nutrients don't work that way. Yeah. That'd be a bit like saying, well, uh, Philip, can I have a carrot at the same time that I've got a bit of tomato mm. and some cucumber yeah. and lettuce? It's tinkering at the edges, isn't it? That's all it is, yeah. yeah. So well, Vicky, Vicky's on, um, on your vitamin D tablets and she's... So she's got the good quality ones, and she's left me to, to mop up the bad quality ones. And on my ones, Philip, which I won't mention where I get them from, but there's not much in them. And on the front, it says 25 with a funny... UG. Squeaky. UG. Yeah. So that's not even going to kick... Well, um, off, yeah, we, we, we mostly... Um, they, they either calibrate them as micrograms, UG, or IU, international units. Yeah. And the conversion is uh, just take the 25 and multiply it by 40. So what you're taking is 1,000 IU... Okay, so that's one tablet, is 1,000 IU, yeah. and how but much you, should it be on? Well, you would need to take 5,000 IU just to maintain the deficiency you've already got. So I'm nowhere near anything. Yeah. yeah. Folks, it's not about how much vitamin D you take so much as what the concentration of it is in the blood, and that's why there's a very um, uh, simple test you can get, either from the NHS, they'll send you the test kit, or you should be able to get, get your local GP to do it, good luck, um, and they test you, and that gives you a number between zero to nominally 300. There's no, yeah. uh, there's no upper range to it. But we want to know where, where you are on the scale, because that represents your serum concentration of, of D3. Um, once, and, and interestingly enough, if you were to become a lifeguard and have safe, unlimited access to sunlight during the summer, you would build 
the Lord would build those, that, that vitamin D in you up to 150 on that scale, but yeah. no more, right? Yeah. So we know that 150 is optimum. Is optimum. Yeah. But the problem we've got at the moment is the um, an NHS is saying, no, 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 if you're over 50, you're fine, and you're not fine. Uh, so there's a whole heap of difference between how the immune system and cellular function works. Um, if you're 51, in which case they say you're fine, yeah. up to 150 to even higher, you know. So those little tablets I take, one a day, um, really, if I take five, five, that's put, just about put, scraping. Put it, put it in the dog bowl. Yeah, really, it's not even... Yeah. yeah. So It says, do not ex exceed stated dose. Yeah, because everyone's like, oh, there is such a thing as vitamin D toxicity. Yeah. You'd have to be literally too stupid to live yeah. to take too much of it. You know? I could easily stick five in in one go. Well, I mean, when it comes to children, um, again, everyone gets very nervous around kids. Um, you, we have a, there's a simple formula, it's well known, you take the work out their body weight in pounds. Now we can work in pounds again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But not until 11 <laughs> o'clock tomorrow. tomorrow okay. night. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but you work out, kids and pets, work out their body weight in pounds, multiply by 35, actually, is the figure. But I do 40 because it makes the maths a bit easy. Yeah. Um, and it goes into the kid. And then, of course, people say, well, how often do you, you know, can you do give it with food, with that? No, 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 just, just swing the kid from the chandelier and pop it in, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And Anna doesn't, Anna doesn't get sick, she doesn't. I mean, every now and then, she, Daddy, my throat's a bit sore, in goes the vitamin C, vitamin yeah. D, and, and it's cleared. So I can take five of those tablets, easy, no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Any day of the week, no yeah. worries, great. People I know swear by the celery diet, not only to lose weight, but also to recover from illness and restore health. Looking at the nutrient quality of celery, how can it do so much? Good question. Um, a lot of it is its cleansing ability. A lot of it is taking the load off. I mean, if you actually think about how most of us live our lives, we're stuffing ourselves with food, which is a, um, a luxury we have in the first world. But, and often, why fasting's become really popular is because it takes the load off the body for a bit. And we've spoken about this intermittent fasting, and Dr. Michael Mosley's been speaking about this recently, and that's taking the load off the digestive system. The Bible obviously goes very heavy on fasting uh, as a means of allowing the body to recover, but also spiritually um, regen regenerating us as well. Yeah. So, when you get into fasting, uh, the celery, just to touch on that question, a lot of these nutrients like um, celery and um, cabbage is an interesting one. Cabbage is loaded with something called phenethyl isothiocyanate. I'm going to test you on this afterwards. And um, it has marked uh, what we call anti-neoplastic properties. It's protective against cancer. The cruciferous veggies generally are pretty good with this, with PETC as they call it. So you look at nutrients as not only um, uh, information systems, giving the body information or nutrients, but also they have, you, you know, let your food be your medicine. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's medicine. Yeah, it is. And God talks about this in Genesis 1:28 and 29. He it talks does. about that as well. Absolutely. Here's one, just to take us off the beaten track, but an interesting one. How do you guys feel about transcendental meditation? I'm thinking of going on a course. TM. Um, my, well, I've never tried it. Um, no. I wouldn't because I'm kind of warmed off in, in the Bible. Uh, we are told to uh, meditate on the Lord, and yeah. that's essentially what I'm going to be doing. I think this, that when you go into altered states, when you go into slower states like alpha, have you ever watched somebody watching TV? They look, yeah, you do they, stare they, at them sometimes. They, they yeah. look like this. Yeah. Mm. And they're in an alpha state, yeah. which is uh, it's like a 10 hertz cycle. You know you have brain waves? Brain waves, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're in a beta state at the moment, so we're, we're kind of talking to one another, brain's active. When you slow down or when you go into a, a restful state, it's an alpha state, there are lower states than that. Yeah. And in studying it, we find that a lot of people can go into trances and the problem that can occur here is that um, people can become uh, a target, if you like, for other spirits. Spot on. And I've seen many, many cases where people have ended up in deep trouble by going into these practices. We also get a certain number of phone calls on a condition called sleep paralysis. Have you come across this one at all? No. This is where you wake up, and there's a lot of people probably watching this that this will be familiar with. You wake up in the middle of the night in terror, 
and you sense there's a presence in the room. It used to be known in the old days, they used to call it old hag because you'd wake up and there'd be this ugly old kind of demonic looking woman sitting on your chest and you couldn't breathe, you're paralyzed and it's called sleep paralysis. And a lot of people get this. I've had it several times in my past where you wake up and it's, it's, a, it's a dreadful, horrifying feeling that there's a presence in the room with you. And it's dispelled by just simply the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, years later, I worked with a psychiatrist, and he was uh, saying, no, no, it's just the brain waves, and it's this, and it's that, and then, no, it's not, because if it were, how come I don't have um, Charlize Theron sitting on my chest? You know, why has it got to be an ugly person? Why can't it be the most... Well, you, you know where I'm going with that one. Why has it got to be ugly? And the answer is because it is a demonic presence seeking embodiment. Really it tickled you, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, why? Why has it got to be bad, right? <laughs> Because only the enemy brings darkness. <laughs> Absolutely. OK, good one here from Dory. Hi, Mark and Philip. My eight-year-old granddaughter has just recovered from scarlet fever, which was originally diagnosed as bacterial tonsillitis. Her temperature was so high that we thought we were going to lose her. Mm. I believe prayer brought her through, but would high doses of Vit-C have helped with that? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Scarlet fever was an outright killer, as was measles, mumps, whooping cough, and the infectious diseases of old, which largely, well, they went into sharp decline. I've been covering this in my books from 1858 onwards, when Britain led the way in cleaning up our infrastructure. Prior to 1858, uh, our cities were really horrendous. I mean, they were full of poo. It was just awful. And there was an event called the Great Stink of London in 1858, when it was so hot, and there was so much excrement in the Thames. And as you know, Parliament is sitting right on the Thames there. Yeah. And the wind dropped like it did last August. And it just ignited the stench across London. And Parliament fled. <laughs> Never a bad thing. They, cle <laughs> they cleared off. And about two months later, they come over with their hankies glued to their faces, going, we've got to fix it, we've got to fix it. Most people don't realise that prior to 1858, the only two things the British government did was war and trade. Yeah. That was it. There weren't the myriad little, you know, programs going on that we see going on today, a yep. million things the government's sticky beaking its way into. It was war and trade. It was the empire. War and trade. Yep. But now it was war, trade and poo. They had to clean up the environment, and they did. And they hired engineers like Bazalgette and others. Bazalgette built the sewage system that uh, still operates under London to this day. Yeah. Uh, built Maidstone Bridge as well, my okay. hometown. So, uh, and... They cleaned up the water supply, they passed laws limiting the number of um, uh, families that could be crammed into one tenement block. Landlords were very greedy back then. Half of them would be underground. Um, they'd get rickets because of the no sunshine, vitamin D, D deficiency and all yep. that. So there were these social clean-up programs which are never really explained in medical school. Um, but these, all these infectious diseases went into sharp decline. Now, people were still getting the measles, they were still getting whooping cough, but they weren't dying of it anymore. In fact, I read one report that said that at the height of the whooping cough epidemics, they were losing like 10,000 a month in the London boroughs. I mean, it was that bad. Now, today, you get maybe, on a bad year, maybe four or five deaths from whooping cough in Britain uh, on, in a bad year. So people still get whooping cough, but they're no longer dying from it. People still get measles, but they don't die from it anymore, in almost all cases. And the flu is still around. The flu is still carting people off. But the two demographics that are particularly vulnerable would be the very young and the very old. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Poor immune system. There yeah. it is again. Ah, there it is. OK. Um, titled psoriasis. Thank you, what a great team. Doctors say that this is a life problem, psoriasis. God says different, of course, but what can I do to help myself? Glad you asked. Mm. Psoriasis. Psoriasis. Here's the thing. Next door to where I live, uh, they're putting in a new housing estate. Is that happening with you, by the way, wherever you are? Building houses absolutely everywhere. Oh, I, oh, and there's a builder who... Can't, there was a builder, a young lad, maybe uh, 28, walking past my front door on his way I to remember work. remember this story. Do you remember that? Brilliant, yeah. He had psoriasis all around his face. And I sat and looked at this guy, and he, I, I would pass him, and, I, and finally I said, um, I said, can I have a word? And he said, yeah, what's up? And I said, the psoriasis on your face, um, you know, uh, uh, I can help. 
I can suggest a few things. Anyway, I told him vitamin D and to... Um, we have a whole thing on this in the ABCs of disease, by the way, under skin disorders, which covers eczema and dermatitis as well. But long, long, the, story, long the short of it was, uh, he was low on vitamin D and, again, high levels of vitamin C, changing the diet out, got rid of the wheat. See, once again, if you've got any sort of skin complaints, the first question you've got to ask is, why am I even dealing with this? Mm. Right? Why is my body... I mean, if we assume the Lord's given us a body that can pretty much replicate itself through 80, 90 years of life, then when it's not doing that, there's something out of balance and we need to find out why it is. If you've got the flu, the first question you should ask is, why have I got the flu? That's the important part. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, four weeks later, it, it was... Well, it, yeah, it was just a trace of, of, of what was there. So these are obvious things. Why would we not try these things first? But a lot of the time, of course, and I, I speak to many doctors about this, and they say a lot of the time, you know, these problems that are walking into these community medical centres, which, by the way, mostly, most of what's walking into community medical centre uh, medical centres are metabolic problems, diet and lifestyle problems. Yeah. Linked to what we're doing to ourselves. Yeah. So Absolutely. the key here is... The, the way to tackle all of this, folks, is there are some obvious things that we can do straight away which we're not being told about. Yeah. Because illness is a big business, as it's you It's a say. big business. A but also, business. it's not a big conspiracy, and doctors are not evil or wicked no, people. Not. But the problem is they are trained in pharma medicine, surgery, that whole thing. And you only have to look at some of these hospitals around Britain which have fast, fast food franchises in their ground floors. I do smile when I say that. <laughs> smile out To realise that we're not failing on a complicated level here. We're really not. Yeah. And um, as one of only five remaining taxpayers left in Britain, I'm upset. Because <laughs> oh, no. I'm paying for all of it. And so are you in more ways than just money. <laughs> now, I've said oh. my bit. How's your mother? Oh. <laughs> She's all right. And if you are self-employed, it's the 31st of January tomorrow, so... Uh, OK, make good. Sure you pay your bills. Thank you. Just oh, myself, then. Yes, it is. Isn't it, it is, isn't it? <laughs> and on the same line, hi, Mark and Philip, how can I get rid of atopic and seborrheic eczema without using these medical creams, Jim? Yeah, good question as well. And uh, with eczema, we're looking at a react... Can be a reaction, can be an immune system problem. Again, diet changes. One thing that is pretty fractious to skin um, will be wheat. Ah, oh, do you know what? I hope my family's listening to that. Yeah. Modern wheat. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. It's not real wheat, is it? It's not real wheat. It's not no. the wheat your grandparents had. Um, there's a great book you can get off our website by a top cardiologist in America called Wheat Belly, Dr. Bill Davis. Yeah. He's single-handedly wrecking the wheat industry in America, that guy. Um, without getting into it, um, they, there was some crude genetic manipulations made to wheat in the late 60s, early 70s in Mexico, which then came over to our um, agro facilities here to boost the, the uh, yield of wheat. And it was a problem that occurred during World War II when, they were, when the U-boats were torpedoing the grain shipments coming over from the US and Canada. And we wanted to be self-sufficient in wheat, but we couldn't because the, the original biblical wheat was something called emmer, E-M-M-E-R, emmer wheat, which on the farmer would grow up to the throat. That's right, yeah. Whereas today, if you walk through a wheat field, it'll barely clear your kneecap. Um, and it's got a much heavier head. It's got a, um, a protein in it called gliadin, which is an opiate. It binds to the opiate receptors in your brain, uh, brain, creating appetite stimulation such that you will, on average, eat about 440 calories a day more yeah. because you're just jonesing for more food all yeah. the time. Yeah. So the key here is that if you suffer... And why do you think... If this thing is non-toxic, why have you got a massive gluten-free industry? Yes. Which, by the way, is covering a multitude of other sins as well. Because the other thing with wheat is it breaks down into a gush of sugar yeah, because does. of a carb in it called amylopectin A. Um, in fact, on the back of Bill Davis's book, on the hard, hardback cover, he's got, a, he's got a photograph of two slices of whole wheat bread. And he says on the back of the book, he says, if you eat these two slices of whole wheat bread, this is going to raise your blood sugar quicker than if you eat two tablespoons of sugar, table sugar. That's how quick it That's the work. brown stuff without the, the, brown with stuff, the, yeah. with the wood chips in it, right? Not yeah. even the white yeah. stuff. So there are all sorts of problems with bread. And then I get the emails, well, you know, can I have this, can I have that? And the, the people are trying to work around it. Um, there is still the heritage... If you make your own bread, you can still get the original heritage wheat, which is Emma. And if you go back even further than that, Emma wheat was a natural hybrid between wild goat grass and um, einkorn. They were 14 chromosome uh, wheats, einkorn, 14, uh, wild goat grass, 14, and they got together 
I think Harvey Weinstein's missed an opportunity to make a movie about this. Uh, but they all got together and they made Emma wheat, and Emma, of course, was the wheat that Jesus knew. Yeah. Um, and that was farmed prolifically in the Nile Valley and places like that as well. So that's what we should be eating. But it's a tiddly head. It's a little small head, and it's not given the yield, I mean, you look at the, the, the size of these um, uh, wheat heads that they get in the fields uh, coming up, you know, this summer. Just have a look at it. Yeah. Um, Jack and I were out running this uh, last summer, Philip, and we went past a wheat field. Just, we just had you on the show. You were talking about the height of the, the, yeah. the wheat. And I said, there you go, Jack. It's there. It's literally two foot high yeah. by your knees. Yeah. Well, up to Jack's ankle because he's about six foot three. But there you go. Um, I've just seen recently online that excessive calcium, i.e. from supplements and too much milk, can cause heart problems and have a serious health trouble. What does Philip think? P.S. All I know is I stopped taking them and I think I feel better. <laughs> Regards, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit, I don't recommend calcium supplements um, for two reasons. One, you're dead right. Uh, people that are gobbling down calcium, especially if they have low levels of D, the calcium remains in circulation, doesn't get drawn into the bones. Mm. So it calcifies the heart and arteries, so that's not a good thing. Um, and... Uh, so the other thing also is that there's different types of calcium. There's coarse calcium and fine calcium. Now, when, uh, when cows eat grass, they're eating fine calcium, but their bodies compact the fine calcium into coarse calcium to build baby cows and the big ones, right? So when we drink milk, cow's milk, what we're drinking is coarse calcium. So we're not getting the absorption because we can't absorb coarse calcium anywhere close to how, as effectively as fine calcium, which you would have, if you eat um, veggies or fruits, you're getting fine calcium coming in. That's absorbable, no problem at all. Okay. Coarse calcium, that's a bit of a problem. So I would agree with that. Okay, good stuff. By the way, one point on that. Yeah. Um, Osteoporosis isn't, it's sold to the public as a calcium deficiency, it's really not. It's a, it's a vitamin D deficiency, which of course creates problems with drawing calcium and, ah. and, and uh, bone matrix to, you know, uh, uh, into the skeleton. Yeah. So what we should be doing is addressing osteoporosis primarily, diet with, with diet, vitamin D and that sort of thing. Vitamin D, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Evening Mark, Philip, great show. My best friend has what she has been told is a very rare disease Tuberous sclerosis. She has tumours on her kidneys and shadows on her lungs. The tumours are not cancerous, but she has been told there is no cure and it could shorten her life. Do you have any knowledge of this and could you perhaps give us some health advice, please? Bless you. Rosie. Rosie, uh, go back to what I was saying just um, a minute ago, and that is, if you've got a problem like this, however rare it is, well, the first question you ask is, hang on, why is my friend dealing with this? Mm. Right? Yeah, there's a reason. So the, the answer to that is, obviously, something's not right with her immune system, cellular repair and that sort of thing. In which case, we go into those obvious things first. We, again, check the D. Doctors should be doing this before. Uh, many doctors now do this. In fact, we're seeing um, there are summits going online in America where they'll get 50 doctors. These are the top people. And they'll all go on a summit uh, online that doesn't cost anything to look at. Mm. And you get to the benefit of these 50 doctors all talking to you about stuff like this. The obvious things to do first. So what I would do, Rosie, is have your friend consult uh, a doctor, make sure that doctor's gonna cover those initial metabolic bases, test the D, have a look at, get into her life a little bit. Was she put through trauma? Was she, did she have some sort of stress history? Um, because if that's in her past, that's suppressing immune function. There's nothing like stress to crash the immune system. Mm. And we're all stressed out right now. We've, we're, you know, we've, um, uh, I would say 80% of the phone calls I get have got stress attached to them. So it's a big problem. So start with the obvious stuff first, I would. Yeah, yeah. stress. Sorry to hear about that, yeah. And just on, on a stress note, if you know my story, you know I've lived in high levels of, of stress and anxiety for many, many years. Uh, I, but I can't just, I can't speak of the, the, the greatness of exercise enough. The Lord, in, in his mercy, has had me running marathons like Forrest Gump all my life. and. Uh, the fact that I'm still here, Philip, is, is, a, is a testament to God's goodness because yeah. what does exercise do? It, it gets your blood sugars lowered again. Yeah. It gets rid of all your cortisol and your uh, adrenaline. Yeah. It increases the good cholesterol, lowers the bad, and it does all sorts of things. And uh, yeah. if you can, get exercise. Get your, get your One heart. of the things I'm going to be... Um, oh, got a new tour coming up, by the oh, way. Oh, brilliant. We'll can go on that as well, then. Give that a little plug. Yeah, go for it. There you go. It's called The 100. The 100 Things. There you are. Your essential survival kit for 2020. I'm going to be covering everything. It's the 100 things you can start doing 
and we get into everything for, uh, from listen to what comes out of your mouth. It's a good indication as to when to take the full week holiday, right? <laughs> In other words, if you're cracking up, time to back off, you know? Yeah. Um, things like um, the, the sky rarely falls in. You know, we've got people just terrified that, you know, doomsday's around the corner. I mean, one day it will be around the corner. Yeah. But perhaps not just yet, but, but there are people that are really getting into trouble over that. We're going to deal with um, those things, you know, that uh, it's, it's going to be an awesome session. I'm putting the presentation together. I've been taking about three, three months to put this presentation together. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be great. Wow. So do come along to that. I'm going to be dealing, uh, doing 24 regional dates around the UK. Uh, so just go onto the website at credence.org and just see um, where the date is closest to you and come along. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Always, yeah. always fun. And can I say, Vicky and I went to one of his last ones. Was it down in Maidstone, Philip? Yeah. Was yeah. Great time. Uh, it's it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And he doesn't read off any auto cues. All the information is stored in there. And Harry brings it to mind immediately. Is um, is pretty unreal. Hello, guys. I live in a retirement home. Many ladies ladies suffer greatly with constant UTIs. The doctors always give an antibiotic, and four weeks later, the situation recurs. Why is this painful and nuisance problem so prevalent and what can make it less persistent? Everyone tries everything as doctors recommend. Thanks from Susan. Susan, I hate to sound like a broken record, but we're back to the vitamin D thing again. Yeah. Remember, these people are inside most of the time. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Urinary tract infections are really awful. And again, the first question you ask is if you or a relative you've got has a UTI, first question you ask is why are they even dealing with it? And the answer is the immune system's taken a hit. And the doctors, and, and by the way, what you've just listed out in your uh, email is, is, is the point that needs to be made, and that is they give them the drugs, the antibiotics, it appears to make it go away, then they stop the antibiotics and it comes back again, which tells you that that patient's immune system is, is so low in function that it's not able to pick the slack up when they come off the antibiotics. So in order to bolster this, there are care homes around the place now that are giving high dose of vitamin C. There is no bacterial and no viral problem that vitamin C can't help with. And it should be put in there anyway in therapeutic amounts. Therapeutic amounts of, of C, as I said before, really begin at about five grams uh, for adults. And there are doctors that we talk to and that I've um, been working with for years. We talk often that are prescribing 10, 16 grams of vitamin C a day to patients that are suffering these sorts of problems. I'm not against antibiotics. Antibiotics have saved millions of lives. They are a two-edged sword, though. Um, so a short, a short, sharp hit with an antibiotic can get the job done, but you've got to have an immune system to pick up the slack when you come off it, and yeah. that's often not the case. Yeah. And I feel for these people because I get an awful lot of people, um, sort of 80-year-old and up, um, that are have been suffering who are now getting out of these problems because they're ad addressing the nutrition accordingly so allison by the way the extract of garlic is 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 a is a great uh, natural antibiotic it's um the great thing about allison is you haven't got to stuff yourself with 50 garlic cloves and and um wreck your marriage you can you can actually take quite hell of us about allicin, which is the sulfur and oxygen bonds of garlic. You know, when you hear about garlic doing all the good things it does, yes. that's, um, it's a very ephemeral compound in it called allicin, A-double-L-I-C-I-N. Yeah. Um, and um, a lot of the, a lot of the um, biochemical studies on allicin were done actually down in Rye, oh, okay. in yeah. East Sussex, yeah. um, with the, by Allison International. And it's a, it's a terrific substance, um, and it's used a lot for uh, bacterial problems, kills MRSA and stuff like that as well. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Philip. Down to our last, literally less than two minutes. Stephen's got a very quick one. Hi, Mark and Philip. My daughter suffers from acne on her face. She's 25, and I was wondering what your advice would be. But down to our last couple of minutes. Yeah, with acne, you'll be looking at a couple of things. You'll be looking at um, whether uh, girls often put makeup on that clogs pores, that creates problems and infections. Again, you'd look at hydration, you'd look at diet. Wheat can be a problem, high sugar can be a problem. Insulin roller coaster, where people are eating high carb meals all the time, can be a problem. Vitamin D, low vitamin D can be a problem. Uh, so there's a whole thing I cover in the ABCs. Just go ahead and email me and I'll send you the chapter. It'll save you buying the book. Um, and it'll deal with acne and the various types of it. Um, acne conglobata, acne vulgaris. Uh, what's that other thing? Uh, rosacea. Rosacea. Yeah, rosacea, we deal with that as well, okay? Great stuff. Um, yes, yeah, quite straightforward. Brilliant. Philip, I've loved tonight. It always goes too quick. 
We need a two-hour show. We need a two-hour show, guys. Yeah, we'll plug for that. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Uh, Philip, so when does your tour start? We're down to our last 30 seconds. Any starting dates you can give us out? Yeah, end of, um, end of February. We're starting off at Guildford, kicking off, and then Maidstone, my hometown. Yep. And then it's uh, Great stuff. all points after that. Brilliant. Get them booked. We're down to our last 10 seconds. I've loved tonight. Guys, we will be with you next week, OK? Keep looking up. The Lord's coming is near. Stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you all. Take care.